I'm a bit stressed because I'm the first one. I never open conferences, but I hope it goes well. And I'm very bad in timing, so I will look at you all the time. Essel, my name is Bata Biel. Uh, I'm a journalist with almost 16 years of experience working for mainly televisions. But for the past two years, I was also working as a media trainer, media training specialist in the past year and a half with Google News Lab. So my experience is both with media and a bit technology companies. Um, and and therefore, uh, I'm experiencing and uh, approaching different topics, not just digital skills, but also a very important topic that I will be talking about today, which is trust. Uh, so just to start with, uh, uh, I wanted to ask you, do you remember like, who in the past year, uh, did it happen to you that you thought, I don't trust this story in the media? Can you raise your hand who had this feeling? quite a number of people. Do you remember when you read a story and you thought it's totally fake? And again, quite a lot of people. Did it ever happen that you read a story, you thought that it's not true, but it turned out to be perfectly true? Yeah, less people. <laughs> so anyway, I will be talking about this trust because this is an issue that is very important to me since uh, as a journalist, but also a person who worked with media in Central and Eastern Europe quite a lot. And whenever I traveled as a media training specialist, I always heard journalists saying that, uh, actually I was like a priest, everyone was confessing the problems to me and trust was one of those. So the media landscape is changing. I always say that we live in this world of plenty we have plenty stories, we have plenty resources, we have plenty of technology, we have plenty of tools, uh, but what we're missing is actually sometimes the basic thing in the media that is trust that I was saying. Also, the, the way the, the things are changing is that people are more aware of what's going on in the world, of how people are commenting on stories and doing stories, because they got the tools as well. So, uh, this media trust thing is not just our perception, it's not just my perception that I think that people distrust media, it's also research. So here uh, will be just a couple of numbers in a second. Um, Reuters, Digital, uh, uh, Reuters Institute's Digital News Report is a report I always recommend reading. Uh, it doesn't unfortunately involve Moldova or Romania, but here are a couple of countries uh, that answered the question, uh, the people answered the question whether they uh, trust the media. As you can see, Finland is doing the best. Poland was doing pretty well. The, the data is for 2015. Uh, but look when we go further, USA is just 33% of people. Hungary, 31% of people trust the media, and Greece, 20% of people only trust the media. This is like a terrifying number, and the thing is that the numbers keep on going lower. We still don't have data for 2016, uh, but I can guess that in many of the countries it will go even further lower. Turkey, with the political situation and uh, how the media is being curbed, Hungary, uh, USA after the elections, Poland, uh, the political situations, that's my probably, I'm guessing, it will go lower. It doesn't mean that I don't have data for Moldova. I used data from Institute uh, uh, de Politice Publice. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Uh, I, I cannot say what their mythology was, but I chose this one because it can show you how the trust in media was changing. And in 2014, it was still 65%. In April last year, it was 42%. And within a couple of months, it went 12% lower. So this shows us that the problem is really huge. Now an interesting thing, some data from Poland, where I, where I am based, uh, the people mainly trust radio uh, and online news websites. This is very interesting because online news websites were the only media type that actually gained trust, which is quite surprising. All the other media types are going lower. And what I find super interesting, it's totally the other way around in Moldova. For example, in many countries like Poland, uh, Germany or Sweden, radio is the top trusted media type. 
Whereas in Moldova, it's TV. It's most probably because uh, most of the people watch TV. It's the main source of information. However, it's still interesting because in Poland, it's just the same. However, people don't trust the TV. Uh, in Moldova, actually, it doesn't matter whether it's uh, TV or internet, the trust was going way, way low. Some more interesting data, uh, people here trust more the Russian media uh, than Romanian media or local media. The interesting thing, however, that um, is that Romanian media and local media are gaining trust when the people are asked that way. So that would be more or less the statistics. I will show you some more. But the main thing for fighting with distrust is realizing there is a problem. If you talk to many journalists, if you talk to many media managers, they still don't pay attention to it. Actually, there is uh, some research, but not with very specific data. But in Moldova, if you talk to journalists and ask them what is the most respected and trusted source of information, is it, uh, I don't know, um, media, government, local governments, the journalists would say media, whereas the, pod, the general public would say something totally different. And it's important to, to remember that I don't have data for that for Moldova, but this is also an international trend that people actually trust more to news brands than they trust to journalists, which is even more terrifying. So you remember data for Poland for media brands was 55%, and for journalists it's just 40%. Too. Greece is almost terrifying, like 11% of people only trusted the journalists. And if you look, for example, on Facebook, uh, people trust more their friends for the stories they share than they trust the sources, the media outlets or the journalists. So this is quite terrifying. Um, the only thing that is not changing, for example, in Moldova is that uh, there is the general distrust for different organizations. Um, so if you ask me uh, what are the reasons for people not trusting the media, here will be a couple of those. Uh, loss and fairness in institutions in general. In Moldova, there is only one institution that people trust more than distrust. Do you know what institution that is? Church, exactly. But in, uh, in general, we don't trust the institution anymore. And it's not just Moldova, it's around the world. We don't trust media, we don't trust governments, we don't trust police, doctors, and so on. Then it's the perception of political influence. Case in Hungary or uh, Turkey, that's what the people are mainly saying. Business and commercial influence, that's what we often don't pay attention to. But how can you trust the media if it's owned by one person in a country? Or how can you trust the media if it's it's owned by a politician. I will name just a few countries. It's Moldova, it's Czech Republic. It's becoming more and more widespread around the world and it's terrifying. Also, people are fed up with yesterday's news and just following click bites, not real stories. And manipulation, propaganda and fake news. I hate the term fake news. Uh, for the reason that we're putting fake, uh, as fake news, we're calling everything. Uh, and propaganda is propaganda. Fake news is fake news. So we also should remember about it. Um, here's a nice just GIF. It's in Polish, but I wanted to show it. Uh, actually, it, you can try it in English. You can probably try it in Russian. So I looked on Twitter. And the case of realizing there is a problem uh, is, that, is that noticing it. So those are opinion leaders in Poland on Twitter sharing stories from mainstream and respected media. And when they share stories, what they're writing here is, if this is true, like how can you ask that question? If it's the media, you should trust it. But that's not the case. So people do not trust us. So what can be done to rebuild trust? The levels are different. We need the media to, uh, to try to rebuild it. We need journalists, business owners, media owners, but we also need the general public. I don't know how many journalists we have here. Are there actually none? But it, oh, oh, there are a few. But it's actually all of our responsibility to fight for that trust. But when it comes to the media, the thing is objectivity. We should redefine it. Why? Can you actually still talk about objectivity if you're covering stories from Syria? If you're covering the stories about the president that lies? Um, is, it, 
is like the New York Times that endorses, or any other media outlet that endorses a candidate for president. Are they still objective or not? So the objectivity has changed. There are a couple of other things. Accuracy, plurality of opinions in the media, uh, accountability. If we want to make the governments accountable, we need as media to be accountable as well than integrity of opinions, proactivity, and tonality. Do we really need to say that civil war was bloody? Is there any civil war that is not bloody? Do we also need to uh, talk about, uh, invite like guests, the so-called experts who talk about uh, deny climate change? Do we really need to invite them in the media? And you can see that they're invited there anywhere. We need greater transparency in the media. We need new codes of practice. Many media outlets still live in the 20th century, although everything that, it, it doesn't matter if it's TV, if it's radio, we're so much digital nowadays and the codes of practice are totally different as well. We need to emphasize more the need of media literacy. And this is also the job of the media, not just the governments, not just the NGOs, but the media as well. So, um, what to do for the people not to think that we are liars? At the editorial level, we need evidence-led gathering, news gathering and more facts than opinions and comments. If you turn on any TV, actually, what you mainly get are commentaries, not news stories, not the basic stuff that you expect from the media. We need diversity of opinions, so don't tell me that you're a conservative media outlet, but just even if you are, why don't you have a liberal uh, essay writer every week uh, to have a different opinion as well? Invite real people and real experts. So many times there is like an expert on Polish television that you can hear him any time there is a terrorist attack. And he's an expert for all the stories like that. But he hasn't worked on terrorism since the 80s. Like, don't we have a better expert not right now? Invite real people. Invite people, show the true human stories. And the thing also is very important is invite people from local places. Like, don't think only, don't concentrate only on the capital. Uh, Kishinev, Warsaw, Bucharest, uh, New York, Washington, the big cities, there you can hear their voices in the media. Why the populists are winning? Because you cannot read the stories of ordinary people for small villages. We've forgotten about them. And we also need to be transparent about methods and values. I'm getting angry and ang angry because I'm actually angry with this mistrust that is happening. Then we need also changes on the business level. We need ownership, transparency, and funding transparency. They don't always go together, but we have to be open about it. And if a media outlet is owned by the politician, everybody needs to know it. Uh, although, of course, it should disappear. Like, I cannot stand and the fact that politicians own the media. But if, even if they do, the ownership and funding should be absolutely transparent. But we also, on social level, there are things that need to be changed. We need the people to be more curious. We need more media literacy. We need to teach kids at school how to read the media, how to understand it, how to choose the stories, and how to verify, how to doubt them. And then we need the people also, the ordinary people, the every each of us, to be the watchdogs of the watchdog. Like the media should be the watchdogs, but we also should watch it. So like yesterday, for example, I'm reading the stories from Al Arabiya about a Polish woman who was killed in, uh, who died in Egypt. We don't know, probably she committed suicide, very strange situation. And I'm reading Al Arabiya. And then out of a sudden, I see that Al Arabiya is quoting a source that is a white power website. Uh, and it's quoting, calling it a news website, a website that is totally uh, anti Muslim, anti Islam. And they're quoting them as if they were any resource. Um, so the P and I always think that we should, as the readers, also let the media know what the hell are you doing? So, um, as a new code of practice, um, uh, just 
the, the free sentences, it was created in 2001, uh, written by Bill, Co uh, Bill Kovach and Tom Rosenthal. I really like this one, although it's from, I think, 2001. But the three first parts are the key, I think. Journalism's ob first obligation is to truth. Its first loyalty is to citizens, and its essence is a discipline of verification. I always laugh that journalists nowadays is like crossing the street. When you were kids, uh, uh, parents were telling you you need to turn left, right and left to cross the street. If you forget any of those, you might die. And it's the same with the journalist. If you don't verify your story in two or three sources, you might be dead uh, professionally. Um, so why should we uh, focus more on it and, uh, 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 and fear the, the mistrust? Mainly because uh, if people believe nothing, they will believe anything. That's why what I was saying, that's why the populist, that's why all the fake news. People started believing that this photo is from Syria and then it's showing uh, a girl running away, her family was killed, it's not Hollywood, it's Syria. However, it's a video from uh, Lebanon and it might not be Hollywood, but it's not a real story. And then you can see that people start doubting any stories from Syria. What you see here is a fake telling you that all the four f stories from Syria are fake. So it's like, you know, going deeper and deeper and it's like um, a snowfall. And then even politicians use fake photos. This one is a Syrian ambassador to NATO who is showing a photo and saying like, our forces are not that bad. Here's our forces helping the people. However, the photograph is from Iraq. Um, so there is more and more fakes, propaganda, mainly because people distrust things. So I was showing also there's one thing, uh, many of the GIFs you saw were from the serious newsrooms. Has any one of you seen this one? Yeah, almost no one. So um, this is very mean of me because I took it from granted that you did so, so it, or at least that I know it, so why should I care? If I really cared, I would be showing slides with photographs from the Suleiman movie that most of the people watch in our countries. Do you know what's the Suleiman the Great, the Magnificent yeah. Secretary? Yeah, so I would be using it. So what's very also important is that we should focus on representing people's interests, knowledge, and work on citizens' behalf. Many journalists just think, take things for granted without looking uh, at what people expect and what people want. And last but not least, I think this is the main important message for people to trust the media. Let's stop saying that journalism is dead. This is what journalists are also saying. TV journalism is dead. Investigative de journalism is dead. Watchdog journalism is dead. If we keep on believing that journalism is dead, we will never regain the trust. That would be me and uh, all. Uh, sorry I was getting angry and angrier, but I was saying I think it's a huge issue with, we should all deal with. Um, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. I'm available on email and on Twitter. I'll be most happy to answer any questions. I don't know if we're answering the questions now as well. Uh, maybe we can, we can ask questions right now or uh, at the workshop that uh, Beata will have at uh, 4 p.m. So yeah. please, uh, she has already uh, two, two more uh, spaces, so you can go to the yeah. workshop. We'll be learning a bit about tools that you can use for verification and the main rules for doing that. If Thank you're interested in the topic, I would just recommend the website that is called uh, firstdraftnews.com that advises a lot how to verify stuff, how to build up trust, uh, a very resourceful place. Thank you so much, Vera. Thank you. Thank you.